Why would SpaceX do a WDR, a wet dress rehearsal for Starship? It costs time, a lot of fuel, is potentially dangerous, and you do all of that on launch day anyway. But a WDR actually has some significant advantages, and there is a reason a lot of rockets, not only Starship, do them. Let's explore that. In contrast to a dry dress rehearsal, a wet dress rehearsal involves propellant. Hence the wet, because fuel on rocket is mostly liquid. It is a full-on simulation of your launch countdown, including the schedule for operators, clearing the area, performing checks and all the other things you would do on a launch day. We saw such a test the other day when Starship performed its WDR for the second flight, in case you missed that. You would in such a test prepare your tank farm, fill up all vehicle tanks and prepare the vehicle for ignition. But then as soon as you arrive there, you would stop the sequence and do not move through with the test. Basically you stop right before engine ignition. So how does the Starship WDR look? If you have seen our coverage, you will notice the following steps. First, the road is closed ahead of testing to restrict all personnel from entering the pad before it enters a mode where propellants that could explode move around. At the same time, or sometimes even before that, the village will start an evacuation. While for other tests the village is only warned via overpressure nodes, as that already covers the risk during test, for a WDR the village is not considered a safe space to stay. Hence, they will get all the people out of there to protect their health and safety. Since this test is so dangerous, they actually move the roadblock up and have it closer to the Massey's test site since the blast radius is so gigantic. Next up and going on for hours is the conditioning of the tank farm. The massive tank farm takes a long time to be chilled down for the fueling process as every single part that is in contact with the cryo-cooled propellants needs to be prepared for that, step by step. In general, the process starts at the core of the tank farm and both subcoolers to the left and right and then slowly moves over to the vehicle. The final step of this pre-chill is the vents on pad and tower, representing booster and ship. These are the lines going to the booster and the ship, being chilled right before propellant loading. The final step before fuel enters the vehicles. Then it's action time. First the booster and then the ship get filled with liquid oxygen and liquid methane. Also the COPVs and header tanks usually get filled during such a test, since you want to simulate launch conditions. Once they are full, they will start to be pressurized for flight, meaning SpaceX will try to achieve the needed flight pressure that you would need at engine ignition. Rocket engines are designed to work with fuels at a certain temperature and pressure, so a successful wet dress rehearsal would need to demonstrate that they can reach that. Stop all of that and save the vehicle. While it sounds trivial, it's still about 5,000 tons of propellant that need to be moved back into the tank farm while not damaging your vehicle. It's quite a delicate step that will also take hours. Optional step, run the deluge. They did this in the recent test as the vehicle was detanked, because after all, why not? Why not use the time to also test this absolutely critical infrastructure while you're at it? Next after that, open the road, inspect the vehicle and gather all the data. We love to say it here, more data, more better. And the WDR gives SpaceX the full potential to look at the vehicle completely. After a tanking test and inspect every single valve, raptor and weld with time and caution. That's it. These are the steps through a successful WDR. If this all turns out to be good, you are then ready for launch. So why do all of this? Well, first off, you have to do way less in preparation for a WDVR versus an actual flight attempt. While safety and launch teams are acting the same, it does not involve things like airspace closures in Hawaii, since there is no potential re-entering, no marine notices down the flight path that need to be enforced, you don't need to prepare facilities for your employees to watch the launch, 
or prepare a press site for reporters to set their cameras during liftoff. It involves a lot less soft factors compared to launch. Furthermore, it gives you one full more practice run. Yes, it's a dangerous test, but it's no launch. Your launch team gets a complete run of all the things they would need to do under real conditions without having to commit at the end. And finally, you give yourself a data set to compare with during flight day. Inspect the vehicle and truly see if everything went well. A benefit you do not have on launch day. If that all turns green, you know that similar conditions on launch day would give you good chances of success and if not, you have time to find issues and repair them. A benefit you might not have during flight day as then the vehicle is, well, in the air and is no longer in a position to be repaired anymore. Not every issue all the time is caught by sensors and sometimes having your good old Mark 1 eyeballs on something can help to inspect it completely. Of course, there are also disadvantages on this. It costs you a full day of operation time at the pad that you can't use to repair, work, pour concrete or what else. It also costs you money. Another disadvantage is the fact that it involves putting your vehicle through stress one more time. You are filling the tanks, pressurizing them and cool them down quite a lot. During SLS's test campaign, there was a lot of talk about tank limits and how often you can fuel up a rocket. This test is no lightweight and puts the vehicle through a lot after all. For Starship, however, this should not be an issue. The vehicle is designed to withstand many, many fueling operations as it is a reusable vehicle. So hopefully one more test does not break it. If it does, that's a more fundamental problem that would need fixing. And of course, a WDR can be dangerous for the vehicle, in the explodey sense actually. Look at the Amos 6 for Falcon 9. The mission performed a WDR and during fueling one of the helium COPVs collapsed and destroyed the complete rocket. This is the reason why safety measures such as the evacuation are in place. Because these tests can go bad. Even a spin prime, basically the least dangerous test involving methane, went bad once for SpaceX as an explosion happened below booster 7 because of a methane bubble below the pad during the spin prime. So after all, a WDR is there to reduce risk, find issues and make sure you have a higher chance of success on your upcoming flight. This is why SpaceX does them, this is why a lot of companies do them and why they are so common in the industry. What do you think? Did I convince you that a WDR is a good idea for Starship or do you still want it to be skipped on future flights to gain time? Let us know in the comments below and see you next time.